In this video, you're gonna learn exactly how to rank your site in Google, step by step. Now I should warn you, this is an advanced SEO tutorial. So if you don't even know what SEO stands for, this video is not for you. But if you wanna learn about advanced SEO strategies that get results, you're in the right place. In fact, I've used the techniques from this video to grow my organic traffic in record time. I'm Brian Dean, the founder of Backlinko. And in this video, I'm gonna show you my step-by-step -step action plan for higher Google rankings, including lots of real life case studies. Stay tuned. We have a lot to cover in this video, so let's dive right in. I launched my first website way back in 2008. Needless to say, SEO was a lot different back then. Back in the day, I'd spend hours looking for a domain name that contained my target keyword. DogBirthdayCakeRecipes.net is still available. I'm gonna be rich. Today, tricking Google with exact match domains or phony backlinks simply doesn't work. So what does? The strategies I'm gonna share with you in this SEO tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started with step number one. First up, let's boost your site's loading speed. Google has publicly confirmed that they use your site's loading speed as a ranking factor. And from my own experiments, I've discovered that site speed does impact rankings, but not in the way you probably think. Most people think that Google rewards you for having a fast loading website, but that's simply not true. My SEO experiments have revealed that Google doesn't reward fast loading websites. It penalizes slow loading websites. This makes sense if you think about it. Google's number one job is to give their users the best result for a given search. And everyone, and I mean everyone, hates slow loading websites. Loading the page. Finally, it loaded. So if your site loads slower than molasses, yes, Google is gonna demote you. But once you hit a certain threshold of speed, you're on par with most other pages on the internet. So Google doesn't see any reason to rank you higher. Make sense? Good. Now it's time to actually improve your site's loading speed. First, head over to Google Page Speed Insights. Enter a page from your site here. Now, as a pro tip, don't automatically put your homepage into this field. Instead, enter an internal page from your site that gets a lot of traffic like a blog post or article. That way you'll get info on a page that lots of your visitors actually see. Next, hit analyze. And Google will show you where your page's code could use a tune-up. Now, Google's tool is helpful, but it has one big problem. It doesn't measure a site's actual loading speed. Seriously. Instead, Google Page Speed Insights simply analyzes your page's code. To get a more accurate feel for how your site loads to real life users, check out gtmetrics.com. GTmetrics will show you data on how your page actually loads to real life users, which is a much more accurate measurement of how your site speed stacks up. Next up, it's time to check on your technical SEO. Here's the deal. You can have the best site with the best content, but if your website has serious technical SEO issues, you're not going to rank. Fortunately, identifying and fixing these sort of issues can be super easy. Here's how to do it. Your first step is to log into your Google Search Console account. Pay special close attention to the crawl error section. If you see any issues with DNS, server connectivity, or robots.txt, that's something you'll want to fix ASAP. But if they all show a green check mark, you're all set. Next, Click on the crawl errors button. This will take you to the URL error section of the search console. It's perfectly okay to have a few server errors and 404s. But if you see hundreds of errors here, this is something that you'll wanna fix ASAP. Moving right along, we have our third step in this SEO tutorial, which is keyword research. Here are three quick techniques for finding awesome keywords. First up, we have Google Suggest. To use it, enter a keyword into Google but don't press enter. Google will suggest long tail keywords that you can target. And when Google actually suggests a specific keyword to you, you know that it's a keyword that lots of people search for. You can also use the very helpful Uber Suggest tool to see hundreds of these Google Suggest keywords in one place. Now, sometimes the best keyword is a term that you already rank for. What do I mean? I'm talking about finding untapped keywords in the Google Search Console. Here's exactly how it's done. First, log into your Google Search Console account 
and click on search analytics. Sort the results by position. Then scroll down until you hit positions 11 through 15. These are keywords that you're already ranking for on the second page. And with some extra on-page and off-page SEO help, you can get them to the first page pretty darn quickly. I'll show you exactly how to do that later in this video. Our last keyword research technique is to use SEMrush. SEMrush is my favorite keyword research tool. Here's why. With most keyword research tools, you pop a keyword into the tool and get a list of suggestions. But SEMrush is unique. Instead of entering a seed keyword into the tool, you enter a competitor's website. And SEMrush shows you all the keywords that they already rank for. Next up, we have content development. Back in the day, Google would reward sites that publish lots of unique, quality content. That's why so many blogs started pumping out mediocre 400 word blog posts. But the truth is this, the whole publish lots of unique content approach simply doesn't work anymore. Today, Google's number one goal is to show their user the best result for a given keyword, which means they don't care how many pieces of content your site puts out or how often you publish. For example, my site, backlinko.com, has only 34 total posts. And I rank for super competitive keywords like keyword research and SEO techniques. So if publishing lots of unique content doesn't work, what does? Publishing less often, but making each piece of content that you do publish absolutely crazy amazing. Here's how to create crazy amazing content. First, make your content insanely actionable. A few years ago, Dr. Jonah Berger from the University of Pennsylvania ran a research study to discover what made online content go viral. So what did he find? Dr. Berger discovered that highly practical content was 34% more likely to go viral than content that didn't contain practical info. For example, my post, 21 actionable SEO techniques you can use right now, contains 21 practical SEO tips. And this highly practical post has generated thousands of social shares and hundreds of backlinks. This page also ranks in the top three of Google for the keyword SEO techniques. Next, you wanna make sure that your content is at least 1,890 words long. Yes, this might go against conventional wisdom. After all, you may have heard that people won't read anything online that's more than 500 words. But I have data to prove that this simply isn't true. In fact, last year I teamed up with a bunch of SEO software companies to conduct the largest ranking factor study ever. In total, we analyzed 1 million Google search results. And we discovered that longer content significantly outperformed short blog posts. In fact, we found that the average first page result in Google boasted 1,890 words. Do you remember that SEO techniques post that I mentioned earlier? In addition to being highly practical, the post is also super long. In fact, that post is over 4,000 words. Next, you wanna make infographics part of your content marketing. BuzzSumo did their own study into what makes content go viral. And they discovered that infographics get an average of 2.3 times more shares than other content formats. I found the same thing from my own experiments. For example, this post on on-page SEO contains a big ol' infographic. And that's one of the reasons that this piece of content gets shared and linked to like crazy. Speaking of on-page SEO, now that you've published an awesome piece of long-form content, it's time to optimize it around your target keyword. Here's how. First, make sure that you publish your page on a short URL. Our ranking factor study found that short URLs tended to outrank long URLs. For example, my target keyword for this page is SEO tools. So I made my URL simply SEO-tools. Note that my URL also contains my target keyword. This is also important for on-page SEO. Next, include your target keyword once and the first 100 words of your article. Why? Google puts more weight on keywords that appear at the top of your page. So to help Google understand what your page is all about, make sure to include your keyword once in the first 100 words of your page. For example, in my SEO tools post, you can see that I use my target keyword right off the bat. Our last on-page SEO tip is to add outbound links to your page. Google wants to see that your content is a comprehensive resource on that topic. And that's only possible if you link out to other helpful pieces of content. In fact, a recent industry study found that pages that link out 
consistently outrank pages that don't link out to other websites. Okay, so you just published your in-depth, keyword optimized piece of content. So you're all set, right? Wrong. Publishing now. Time to chill. Oh crap, I forgot about link building. In many ways, after you publish a piece of content, your job has just begun. That's because it's time for the most important part of SEO, content promotion and link building. There are a thousand ways to build links to your website. So I'm gonna share one of my absolute favorites with you right now, broken link building. Here's the three step process. Step one, find a page you wanna get a link from. Step two, find broken links on that page. Step three, let the site owner know about their broken link. Let's break it down. Your first step is to find a page that you wanna get a link from. This page should be from a site in your niche that has quite a few outbound links. To find pages with lots of external links, use search strings like keyword plus helpful resources and keyword in URL links. This will bring up pages with lots of external links. Next, it's time to find broken links on that page. You can find links that aren't working by installing the free Check My Links extension for Chrome. Then, when you find a page with lots of external links, run Check My Links. It will reveal all the links on that page that aren't working. Finally, it's time to let the site owner know about their broken link and offer your content as a replacement. Here's the exact script to send. Hi name, I was looking for some information on topic today when I came across your list of resources. Great stuff. I couldn't help but notice that there was a broken link on the page. I just thought you'd like to know. Also, I recently published a guide on that topic. It might make a nice addition to your page. Either way, keep up the awesome work and you're set. Last up, I have a bonus tip for you, which is to optimize your site around user experience signals. In 2015, Google announced that they now use a machine learning algorithm called RankBrain. Even though Google has been quiet about the details of exactly what RankBrain does, Larry Kim from WordStream has discovered how RankBrain probably works. According to his data, RankBrain measures how users interact with your site in Google search and ranks you partially based on these user experience signals. For example, Larry noticed a clear correlation between organic click-through rate and rankings. Specifically, he found that pages with a high CTR tended to outrank pages with a below average click-through rate. In other words, RankBrain probably measures CTR and uses this data as a key ranking factor. Larry also discovered that pages with a bounce rate below 76% tended to rank best. That's because RankBrain also looks at how often people bounce from your site. Obviously, the lower your bounce rate, the better. If you wanna learn how to improve your click-through rate, check out this video. And if you wanna see how to prevent people from bouncing from your site, this video is for you. Okay, that's it for my advanced SEO tutorial. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now. Just click on the subscribe button. Also, if you want exclusive SEO techniques that I only share with subscribers, head over to backlinko.com and sign up for the newsletter. It's free. Now it's time to hear from you. Which of the strategies from this video are you gonna use first? Are you gonna improve your site speed or try broken link building? Let me know by leaving a comment below right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. So bad it's good? All right. Wunderbar. I, I could forget this goes like, ugh, like, I'm like eating it. Vacuum time, construction time. That's ridiculous. Again, <laughs> it looks insane.